Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we've got the Civivi Lazar. Esham design knife. Um, oh, I forget the model number off the top of my head and the exact price. It's on the screen. Just under $60 is what this costs. At White Mountain Knives, you save your 10% and it's right around $55. So not bad. We've got a front flipper. We've got 10CR15CO MOV, aka Chinese VG10. We've got G10 handle scales. You can also get it with a pattern welded steel, commonly referred to as Damascus, proper Damascus, but it isn't really Damascus. I've had that discussion before. Damascus hasn't been made for hundreds of years. Not real Damascus anyways, but pattern welded steel, layers of steel combined together. And you can get either copper or brass, antiqued hand rubbed copper or brass with that Damascus, if that's what you want. G10's only in purple or black. We've got a nice gray wash finish. So it's not like a standard stone wash where they just treat the steel. They put a gray coating on it, often maybe usually a titanium coating, and then they put it through the stone washing machine. So a gray wash, the same way they do black wash but it's not black, it's gray. So when you see the close-up pictures of this thing, you're gonna see in some spots, especially up here, it's gonna look all bumpy and textured. Well, that's because of the coating that they put onto the steel. I think it looks pretty good. There's a lot of good things about this knife and one con that bugs me a fair bit. If you're interested in finding out, stick around. The full review's coming right now. All right, there we go. Let's begin this time with our uh, size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Uh, actually, I don't even have it on the, all the way on the screen there, do I? There we go. That's about the size of the Ontario Rat 1 on the same angle. Definitely a smaller knife. This is a sort of a gentleman's folder sized knife. And uh, maybe if you got the metal ones, you might consider those gentleman folders, you know, nice metal, you know, hand rubbed bronze, hand rubbed brass, uh, hand rubbed copper or bronze. Uh, yeah. Or is it brass? I forget which one it is. It's brass or bronze, probably brass. Anyhow, I've made one change to this knife. You can see that pretty nice mirror edge on there now. Not quite a mirror edge. I haven't stropped it up and stuff yet. You know, nice and thin, and it still wasn't cutting that great. And yeah, that's because the grind angles are just nuts on this knife. Just bad. Well over 50 degrees. You know, <laughs> getting closer to 55 degrees than 50 total. So I resharpened it, and yeah, it cuts like a dream now. A dream come true. I've said that before, haven't I used those exact words? It cuts really, really well. And slices. It's an okay piercer as long as you know you've got just that tiny little bit there to act as a guard in case you have to you know bump into something hard and your hand wants to slip over so you got to be careful with that let's uh look a little more at the overall picture here we've got a full flat grind like i said chinese vg10 we've got a liner lock we've got a pocket clip that's right or left side we've got you know, a flat slab G10 with a big chamfer here that gets really wide here at the end of the handle and then tapers to nothing. And this one on the spine gets, goes straight across and just gets really wide right here at the transition point. Fits really well into the palm of the hand when you're holding it. Very comfortable if you take the pocket clip off. <laughs> That's the one big con is the pocket clip. Functionally, it's it, it works in your pocket. It's a great pocket clip. It's a little bigger than it needs to be, and that's the big thing. And I've mentioned this on Civivi knives quite a lot lately. With their flush screws that they've got in there, it doesn't need to stand off from the G10 as far as it does because denim is maybe half that thickness. It takes up half that space if it's denim that's folded over and sewn together like on a pocket. I'll show you. We've got a nice spoon on the end that sort of flattens out there so that's not a problem on that end. Climbs over no problem. Gets in there 
and there is look at all that space there you can see well, it's hard to do it hard to hold it with two hands and look at it but you can see my thumbnail from behind there there's loads of space in there it's got loads of uh, room up and down it's holding it just right here I really wish since they've got nice flush screws that they'd make their pocket clip smaller because in hand when you're holding it it bugs me right there because if you're holding tight especially the steel here from the pocket clip just pushes into your hand and if it was smaller it would push less so while i like the pocket clip i dislike the pocket clip as well so you understand that i'm sure nice t6 screws in there i wish they were something bigger and better actually they're not terribly nice they're they're okay there's my t6 there's my t8 uh, these are weha bits they're made to pretty high tolerances and let's put it in there there we go in that one there's that much play and in this one same thing same amount of play so it's not great the t8s they fit snugly there's almost no play there's just that tiny little bit of movement you can see me doing right there and this one here is even better there's almost no play there quite nice so yeah i'm so glad they used t8 screws here i just wish they'd figure something else out for the pocket clips it's a tricky spot because they're trying to keep everything really small and out of the way hopefully we knives civivi sand cut that big family of companies will figure it out and lead the way in the industry i wouldn't mind that the handle we've got you know a nice recess there the edges were recess a, a concave here convex there it kind of fits nice and small the edges are all nicely rounded the uh, back spacers very small back there not a big one i wish they would have put a lanyard pin in there because i know a lot of people would want a lanyard pin and the blade is right about following this line here so there's lots of space there that they could have put a lanyard pin now i don't use lanyards or very rarely but they could have had one right in the perfect spot right there but they don't but everything else here everything's nice and rounded soft the edges of the liners are nice and soft you can see that skeletonizing right there i'll show you the insides of the knife a little bit later on the flipper we've got some jimping up here and it's a definite front flipper that jimping is only useful to flip open the knife when you're holding it like this the jimping does hardly anything because it's actually if you look down the side there you can't see the jimping see you can see this liner on this side but you can't see the jimping until i get to there and now you can see the edge here the liner sits proud the jimping sits down inside there so it really doesn't do much when the knife is deployed the jimping just doesn't do much i wouldn't mind it if the jimping went further kind of like jimping on the spine of blades uh we'll talk about the pivot later on now the blade we've got an upswept design blade call it a persian style if you want to and the sides are knocked off so we've got a nice chamfer there it keeps most of its thickness to about there and then it starts getting thinner it's fairly strong at the tip um, on the picture of the alignment it's pretty well aligned but if you look right at the tip you'll see that uh, this side has been ground over more than that side so the tip is over a bit the blades down the middle but the cutting edge is over to one side that's pretty common it's uh, fixed now that i've sharpened it but the picture was of uh, the factory condition full flat grind like i said the edge here since it was ground and finished at such a steep angle you couldn't see the cutting edge very much like right now you can see a lot of that very reflective edge before it was very narrow and that's because you know it was done at quite a steep 
uh, grind. Now it's much more shallow, which means it made the grind wider, go up in the blade a little bit more, but it looks nice. If I keep this knife, I'm going to give it a really nice full mirror finish. Right now, it just I just gave it a really sharp finish. It says Isham right there. You know, his uh, eyebrows, sunglasses, and mustache right there. And then right here on the plunge, you've got the steel type, uh, 10C or 15C OMOV. And on this side, you only get the C for Civivi on the pivot pin right here. We've got a great big sharpness choil here. And since it's close there, you can actually use that as a forward grip. If you, if you want to really sneak up, it's fairly safe to do that right there. Your finger goes across this whole width, right? You know, so it's not the most comfortable depending on how you hold it, but you can, um, you know, cinch up a little bit if you want to. You will all have noticed the uh, pretty much triangular hole in there. So that's pretty nice. It's not big enough to get in behind to do you know, an inside flick, but it's okay. Overall, I quite like this blade. Very well done. The pivot and lockup and everything. Close up now of the lockup. It locks up a little bit earlier than I prefer. So you've got loads of wear to go across. It didn't unlock on me ever in my testing, and I do quite a bit of testing. So it's not a bad lockup. I just wish it was just a little bit more engaged. The lock release has got jipping along the side of it. You don't have a lot of space there, but it's enough to get in there and get some traction with your thumb to disengage the lock. So that's good. And I showed you the blade alignment and everything. And I'll show you the insides now. I've just taken it apart. And one thing you will notice with this steel finish, you can see that mark there now. And that's because I just got a tiny little bit of the oil on my thumb when I picked it up and it left a nice mark there. So this, this finish leaves marks if it's a little bit oily very, very easily. And then, you know, I've got to use my um, denatured alcohol to clean it off really well. We've got ceramic ball bearings with phosphor bronze cages. Nice skeletonizing on this side. A little bit of skeletonizing on that side. And you just loosen that back screw of the pocket clip. There you go. You can see it sticking out there a little bit. And of course, the pivot pin, which does not have any Loctite on it. Hopefully you can see that. I might forget to take close-up pictures of that. But yeah, quite nice. There's your backspacer. So this one, again, if you don't like backspacers, you've got a step right there. So you could put this knife back together and... Just use it like that. And, uh, you know, no backspacer if you wanted to. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got these pins back here. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring something out here. I'm thinking on the fly. No, that would get in the way there. You could maybe do it here. Well, let's put them both in and see. That's, do you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the lanyard again. So let's put that together. So without the backspacer, that's how that looks. So that's what it looks like without the backspacer. Put the blade in there. Yeah, you wouldn't want to use that one to tie off on, but you could use that one to tie off on if you wanted to. Because then that pin there is going to stop the paracord from getting into the lanyard. So if you really like this knife design and you really like lanyards, you know, you can just get rid of the backspacer and tie off right there. In case you haven't seen this, you should have seen this by now. Whoops. We've got a round pivot pin. We've got a little notch in the end cap of the pivot pin. And it meets a bump in the G10. And that keeps it from spinning freely. And that's why the C on Civivi knives always sits exactly right because it's got that tooth that it engages with and then we've got a round pin for the round hole to slide over. So one other thing I didn't mention that you will have noticed probably is we've got the uh, integrated pivot pin, a pivot pin stop pin right there on the blade and so it slides in that 
purple space that you see right there. Now I finally covered everything that I wanted to cover in the tear down part. Now I can put it back together. Specs. The weight of this knife, 73 grams, 2.55 ounces. Yes, nice and light. I'm sure the metal versions are going to be heavier. The factory sharpness, 180 bests. Average is about 140, lower number is better. So it wasn't terribly sharpened, but it wasn't sharpened terribly well either. The cutting edge length is 82.6 millimeters, three and a quarter inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the G10, 84.7 millimeters, three and a third inches. The thickness of the blade, 2.92 millimeters, which is 0.1145, so just a little bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest point, is not right here at the heel. It's actually right about there. And that is 19.3 millimeters, 0.76 of an inch, so three quarters of an inch. How thin is it behind the grind? Well, from the factory, it was 0.4 millimeters, 15 and a half thousandths of an inch. And it's more like 16 and a half now because the grind angles, like I said, are much more shallow and wider and they go up the blade a little bit further, but very, very nice. The factory grind angles, they were pretty consistent along the length. Like this side started at 25.5 and ended at 25.8. So like 0.3 degrees difference along the length. So that's good, but still 25 and a half degrees. This side, it started at 27.8 and then it ended at 27.3. So 27 and a half degrees, basically. And again, just very little bit of variability, but still way over 50 degrees. Yeah. Of course, that's closer to over 90. So I'm just exaggerating for effect. Hand sharpening, you know my story on that. It really bugs me that hand sharpening at factories is just done terribly and by hand I mean you know the knife is being held in a hand in some human and you know moving it over the sharpening media. Let's go now to the handle length that is 107.9 millimeters four and a quarter inches. The grip area this way it's just a bit under nine centimeters right around three and a half inches and you also have this little bit extra forward grip. The thickness of the handle on the G10 here, 12.14 millimeters, 0.478 of an inch. So yeah, under half an inch, which is quite nice. A lot of people really like that. And next we have the handle depth. The widest point is right in the middle, 17 and a half millimeters, 0.689 of an inch. And when it's closed, the widest point is right there again, 23.6 millimeters, 0.929 of an inch. And when it's open, it is 193 millimeters, seven and a half inches. So this is a nice uh, medium sized folding knife. Well, I quite like it. It's got a very minimalist construction. It looks good. At least I think it looks good. You know, the Aishim design is quite nice. It's very... <laughs> much following his his theme, his design uh, matrix. I quite like it. It's functional, good action, good lockup, very nice and thin blade so you can sharpen it properly if once you get it at home. It's a good little EDC. Well, not tiny little, you know, it's three and a third inches still on the blade, so not tiny. Uh, Lockup's good, Align, uh, alignment's good, pivot's good. You know, it is open on the front, which I tend not to like because you've got easy access to get gunk and stuff into there. But at least they didn't have to mill away any of the G10 to get to that effect. But I don't really like open fronts like that. I like the... Uh... It's not a big deal. Uh, on this knife, it's not a big deal, really. It's just a preference of mine. The cons on this thing, pocket clip. It's just too big this way. It's too big. If anybody from Civivi is watching, it's too big. T6 screws, yes. 
especially on flush screws, they strip out easily. So, uh, Civivi, one thing I want you to change is if you're going to use these screws like this, use really hard stainless steel instead of really soft stainless steel. I almost, I, I did slip a little bit when I was tightening it up. And so I was just starting to strip it a little bit and I was trying to be very careful. So since that screw is a body construction screw, it really needs to be a stronger screw because I have to take it apart on this side because that's where this is. If I had a screw here, then I could take this side out. Technically, yes, I can remove this screw and then remove this screw. It's just a little more of an annoyance to put it back together again. So I prefer taking them both out on the same side. So if you're a lefty, well, still, then you have to end up using that screw on this side. So, but at least then you got this screw over here. So if you're a lefty, it's a little bit better for that, taking it apart and stuff after the first time. The other things, very minor. I wish the jipping went out further because then it'd be more useful. And the big con about no lanyard, well, it's not quite as big anymore because I found a way that you can use it with a lanyard. You just take off the backspacer. So there you go. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube member supporters. You guys are awesome. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum. Not your thumb. Bye for now.